So no fancy bumper today or anything like that. We're kind of in between series. Um, and um, the temptation is always to, uh, you know, uh, preach some kind of New Year, New You uh, type thing. But I think there's something that we need more than that. We, we need more than, than new tips about how to live or how to be successful or anything like that. And uh, I, I believe that we need um, what God's led me to this morning out of Luke chapter 11. Luke chapter 11 starts out with the disciples asking Jesus, uh, how do we pray? And he teaches them. He, he, he says, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins. For we also forgive everyone who sins against us and lead us not into temptation. We're more familiar with Matthew's version of that, but it's the same kind of structure. And he's not just telling us the words to pray. He's giving us kind of an outline of how we ought to pray. Approach God as Father. Approach Him as, as someone who is familiar and that we're intimate with. But then also, uh, also hold firm and, and honor His name. His name is holy. And then... Then he says, um, uh, pray for his kingdom first. Uh, later on, he will say, seek first the kingdom of God. And uh, then all these other things will happen as well. Um, then he says um, uh, to pray for our needs. And then begin praying as well that we would reflect the forgiveness God gives us in, in the world. Uh, seeking forgiveness first for our sins and then and then uh, ways for us to uh, forgive others. And then, then pray for his protection against temptation. So powerful, powerful prayer. But he goes on to talk a little bit more about the posture of our prayer. The posture of our prayer. We'll talk about that today. But we're going to talk about shameless audacity. If you have your Bibles, would you turn to Luke chapter 11, verses 5 through 10 today. Um, you and I know audacious people. We know them because they embarrass us when we're out in public with them. Um, they say things that we wouldn't say. They do things that we wouldn't do. My mom, uh, growing up, was an audacious mother. Do we have any audacious moms in the place today? An audacious mom will ask the questions you don't want to have asked in front of people you don't want that question asked uh, in, in front of, right? They will embarrass you. They don't care uh, about somebody thinking that they're stupid or that you're stupid or anything like that. All they care about is getting what needs to be gotten and uh, taking care of the people that need to be taken care of. Amen. How many of you had an audacious mom and you're, you're grateful for that, right? Amen. Uh, some of the teens are kind of half-heartedly raising their hands right now going, I don't want my mom to see this, but yes, my mom is an audacious mom. Uh, my mom was audacious enough to know, um, she, uh, uh, she knew where my friends lived, and so she decided to make friends of all the neighbors around my friends. And uh, so she had, um, way before spy cameras and all that kind of thing, uh, she had spies out there, right? Can I hear an amen from the moms in here? Uh, and, and any other kids like that? I could not get away with things. I mean, she would know about it before I got home. And I knew when I walked in the door by her posture, uh, if, she, if she was uh, kind of like this, um, I, I knew I was in trouble. And I might as well just fess up. And just start talking because uh, because mom already knew what was going on. And and uh, she was audacious in that way. I'm a little bit like Megan talked about. I, I'm not quite as audacious about certain things. Uh, there's some things I just don't want to rock the boat on. I, I don't want to cause problems. Uh, I'm, I'm like her in the restaurant. I, if somebody hands me the wrong thing, I'll go... All right, I guess I need to try this. I don't know. Uh, you, you know, but, um, in, in part because I just know how servers are treated, and I know it's not always their fault. Um, I know they have way too many people to handle and things like that. And I've been around friends who just treat those folks like they're dirt or something like that, and, and it just bugs me to no end to have that happen. So uh, being audacious doesn't mean being rude or anything like that, but being audacious means something else altogether. And so uh, let's read this passage where, where Jesus begins to teach us that as we pray, there's a way that we need to pray. There's a posture that we need to have when we pray. And he says this, 
And then Jesus said to them, suppose you have a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say, friend, lend me three loaves of bread. A friend of mine on a journey has come to me, and I have no food to offer him. And suppose the one inside answers, don't bother me. I, I'm, I'm wearing my PJs or whatever your friend wears to bed or doesn't wear to bed. He says, the door is already locked. My children and I are in bed. I can't give you, get up and give you anything. And he says, I tell you, though he will not give you the bread because of your friendship. Many of you have friends like that, right? I mean, you might have a friend that you call up in the middle of the night or something like that when you need something. But you know that there are folks that love you and care about you and are friends with you. But if you bother them in the middle of the night, they're not giving you anything, right? They're going to say, go home. My goodness, let's talk about this tomorrow. He says, even though that... Uh, um, he will not get up and give you the bread because of friendship, yet because of your what? Shameless audacity. He will surely get up and give you as much as you need. Let's say that again. Shameless audacity. <laughs> We're going to be shameless here today. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. Everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds. And the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Shameless audacity. Shameless audacity. You see, the posture with which you pray, whoops, matters. And by posture, I'm not just talking about, uh, should I kneel or should I lay down or, or anything like that. Posture is an attitude or a way of behaving. It's how you say things. Pauses and tone matter. Don't they, men? <laughs> Every man in this room should know what I'm saying. I mean, there is a difference between saying the same words and saying them differently, right? I'm sorry. I love you. Is very different from, I'm sorry I love you. Right? Right? And men, how many of you have gotten caught using the wrong tone? Anybody here say amen, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah it's not just men. Ladies use the wrong tone from time to time as well. But when they use the wrong tone, they mean to use the wrong tone. You know what I'm talking about. You didn't have to agree. All right. You didn't have to. Uh, he, he, Jesus gives this outrageous story about a guy who has the gall to wake up his neighbor because all of a sudden he's got a friend coming in town and he's not prepared for it. Right. How many of you uh, get this kind of thing at work all the time? All of a sudden, somebody else's emergency becomes your emergency, and you need to help them out because, well, I'm in trouble, and you don't want me in trouble. And uh, if, you, if you could just help me out. And this person's, you know, doing his best, saying, why are you talking to me in the middle of the night? What are you doing here? We wouldn't do that. We wouldn't put somebody out like that. And that's the point. Jesus is making a point. He's saying the person who has this posture of shameless audacity dares to go before God when perhaps they shouldn't. Dares to go before God when perhaps it might be embarrassing. Dares to go before God because they need something they don't have and only God can bring it to them. It's a posture. It's an attitude. And it's this outrageous story that, that is captivating to me. See, because of your shameless audacity, he tells his disciples, he will give you as much as you need. See, there are scenarios where I hate conflict. I absolutely don't want to stir the waters. There are other ones 
where I kind of like conflict. If we're playing a board game or something like that, if I can get two of the people I'm playing against arguing with each other, that'd be fantastic. I'm set up for that. At times in board meetings, when the conversation's going just a little bit slow, I'll, I'll, I'll say, are you going to let him say that to you or something like that? Or, or are you going to let the, anybody else uh, see a problem with this? And, and that'll spark the conversation. But there's just sometimes when we don't need drama, right? But God says in your relationship with him, bring the drama on. My granddaughter absolutely loves her birthday. She loves it. She's talking about the birthday that she just had. She, she'll talk about the next one coming up probably in about 10 days. She'll start mentioning it. I kind of want to tell her, you know, we should have a rule where you can't talk about your birthday except for 30 days in advance of your birthday, right? She loves her birthday. But I know this about my granddaughter. She'll find a way to get around the rule. She'll find a loophole. She'll tell me one day, you know, Papa, you know what happens in 11 days? What happens in 11 days? In 11 days, it'll be 30 days before my birthday, and I can talk about my birthday, right? She, she, she's audacious that way. She's audacious when she talks to her papa. And uh, she loves it. You see, there are many things in our life where we pray about it once, and then we walk away. We don't love those things as much as my, grandma, my granddaughter loves her birthday. We're not as audacious with God about those things as my granddaughter is talking to her papa about her birthday. And the reason why she talks to her papa about her birthday is because she knows her papa has a soft spot in his heart for his granddaughter. And he'll get her what she wants. See, there are times... When we don't have what we need because we don't ask for what we want. I don't know about you, but at our house, especially since we, you know, don't have any kids living at home anymore. All of a sudden, you know, usually probably about 20 minutes before it's time to eat. We, we both look at each other and go, what do you want for dinner? See, wise people might start planning things out. I'm, mean, uh, you know, but we haven't figured that out yet. And so, we did, we just it usually gets around to I, I don't care, I don't I don't care. What do you, what do you want? I, I don't care. And you know what we're saying? If you don't care for what you want, then anything's fine. And this passage is is saying that sometimes we need to care about the things that we're praying for. We need to be specific about the things that we pray, we're praying for. You see, the person who's not afraid to have shameless audacity with God believes something about God. We believe and understand that God is not reluctant to bless his people and honor his people. He's not reluctant to listen to his people. We often come to God with a different posture. It's a, a proper posture. Like we're coming before some royal family member or a king who has authority over us but no relationship with us we come and properly pray to god asking him kindly for things and and then kind of back our way out very timidly out of the prayer closet but jesus says the proper posture is one of audacity one of the desperate mom who needs answers. One of, the, one of the people who just is so desperate that they no longer care what anybody else thinks around them. No longer cares what anyone's opinion is. I've got to find an answer to this issue. See, our prayers are too general. It's just like our dilemma for dinner. If it doesn't matter what we eat, then it doesn't matter what we get. There's a, another story in Scripture that I come back to often because it just blows my mind. It's that story of Jacob. Jacob in the middle of the night, J Jacob is, 
He's, he's one of the classic screw-ups of the Old Testament. He's got God's blessing on his life, but he spends his whole life looking for God's blessing. And, and he's, he's so controlling about it that he tends to think, take things into his own hands and messes everything up. Do you know anybody like that? And Jacob knew God's hand was on his life, but he's going through some difficult circumstances and his brother wants to kill him. And he actually has a wrestling match with God. Now, I love the Bible. I am a Bible nerd. I love the original languages. I love the syntax of it. I, I, I love reading scholars about this kind of stuff. Dry, old, dusty scholars. I love it. But, but I still struggle with this passage because I can see this metaphorically. That Jacob wrestling God. But Jacob in his physical being wrestles God who comes as a physical being. And he wrestles him. And God's not as good at wrestling as I thought he was. Because he hangs on to God. He won't let him go. And God, in the form of a man, tells Jacob, he says this, let me go. The sun's coming up. They've been wrestling a long time. Jacob's got some cardio going here. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. Have you ever clung that tightly to God? I, uh, you may have heard the phrase that God's not done with you yet. What I see far too many times is that though God is not done with us, quite often we're done with God. We got a little bit and said that was enough. I'm tired. And God's going to do what God's going to do. And who am I in the whole scheme of things and all the scheme of history? Just one little person to approach God and ask God for anything. I want you to know I think that way at times too. I don't always pray with shameless audacity. As I watched the altars this morning, some of you I've been praying for and I... Just been praying for issues that I don't even know what the issues are. Um, just, just kind of, you know, you nudged me on on uh, Facebook or something like that, and and I'm I'm praying for issues that I, I I don't know about, and I try to to pray with fervor, and I try to pray specifically, and I try to beg God. But I want you to know, just as confession, I don't always pray with shameless audacity. Sometimes I get tired. Sometimes I get weary. Sometimes I fall into the trap of thinking, oh, God's big enough. He knows what I want. He'll do what needs to be done. One of the biggest prayers that we need to be praying, that we need to be audacious about, is asking God, what, what is it that he wants from us? How do we determine what God's leading us into? You know, I found quite often that when we have a decision to make, when we, when we have an important decision to make, that God doesn't often answer right away. He wants to know that we're serious about finding out His way. Quite often He'll answer at the 11th hour so that we have to f uh, pursue Him fully and completely. You know, Jacob says, I'm not letting go until you bless me, God. And God blesses him. God blesses him. Maybe there's some times in your life that you need to grab a hold of the foot of God. And you need to say to God, Lord, I have no business approaching you for this. I'm, I'm just, I'm not holy enough for this. I'm not right with you all the time. But Lord, I'm going to cling to your foot. I'm going to cling to the hem of your garment. I'm going to cling to you until you give me an answer. I'm going to cling to you until you make it clear what I'm supposed to do. I'm going to cling to you until you let me know it's okay. The issue that you're praying about is going to be solved. Many times we think the, thir the circumstances are set. The door's locked. It's shut. The window closed. 
But when we pray to our Heavenly Father, we're praying to someone who knows what to do with locked doors. We need, we're praying to a God who knows what to do with closed windows. We are praying to a God who understands what to do with issues that look settled already. And he can break through. Amen. See, we tend to worry and vent to everyone else but God. It's like complaining to another customer when you need to speak to the manager. It's like, it's like complaining to another person in the restaurant when, when you need to talk to your server. You need to begin talking to the one that can do something about your situation. Today, I want us to start this new year by saying, Lord, we're not going to give up too soon on the things that we pray about. We're not going to give up on God. We're not going to give up on people. We're not going to give up on situations. We're not going to give up on him giving us the clarity of his will. We're going to cling to Jesus. And when we don't think we can hang on any longer, we're just going to trust him. This passage ends with a with a powerful promise, those who knock, the door will be opened to. Those who ask will receive. Those who seek will find. Of course, it's not a promise that if you're going to God and asking him for riches, that's, that's probably not a good thing to be praying for. We, we need to be praying along his lines of his will. But, but there's a poignancy to that, isn't it? There's a simplicity to that, isn't it? It's almost like my granddaughter coming to me because she knows I'm the one person with the soft heart who just might give her everything that she needs. I've gotten ahead of my notes. I'm sorry. There's a line from uh, C.S. Lewis that I came across this last week that just... It gets my heart every time I look at it is this. It says, it would seem our Lord finds our desires not too strong but too weak. We're half-hearted creatures. We fool about with things like drink and sex and ambition when infinite joy is offered us. Like an ignorant child who wants to go on making mud pies in a slum because we can't even imagine what is meant by the offer of a holiday at the sea. We are far too easily pleased. Amen. It's awful quiet in here. You're making me work hard. You were created for eternal joy. What are you asking for? Is it less than that? If it is, you're leaving blessing on the table. You either don't want it or doubt the power of the Heavenly Father to give it. How we pray matters. We pray constantly. We pray all the time. But there are times when I believe you pray until God intervenes until he acts. You pray because it's important. You pray with audacity. You pray in such a way that you don't care who hears you. You don't care who embarrasses you. You don't care who watches. You don't care about the tears that are coming down and ruining mascara. You don't care about the tears that are coming down and ruining your reputation as a man. You just don't care because you have shameless audacity. Because you have faith in a God that can do something. And you know he has a soft spot in his heart for you. And he will do it. Today I want us to make some room for the Holy Spirit to be at work. See, maybe you're here today thinking, I need to get my audacity back. Is that you? I want to pray for you. I want to pray that uh, you desire more of God. That's the prayer God's always going to answer. We, uh, 
I want to pray that you will desire what God desires and that you will desire to have it completely. There's others I want to pray for as well. There's some in a different spot. Some of you have never trusted Jesus. The reason why you're not trusting him now is because you believe you're too far gone. You've done too much. I want to tell you that God's grace knows no limits. His mercy knows no boundaries. He loves you as a child because you are his child. He created you. My prayer for you is that today you'll respond to the gift of God's love, God's salvation, and the gift of eternity within. I'm praying for you. This morning, I believe you have issues that you're praying for. I'm wondering if you'll be a person of shameless audacity. I'm wondering if this morning we can just make our way to the altar and be begin praying for things there's some mamas here that need to be praying shamelessly for their kids you know if your kid was in trouble and you weren't getting the answers that you're probably that mama that wouldn't care who's th who, what anybody in the crowd thinks of you you would be loud and you would be proud and you would get the answers right well this morning maybe you need to be praying for that child um, I, I think there's some men here that perhaps are dealing with some issues of temptation or dealing with some issues that are keeping you from, from following God with your whole heart. I believe you ought to be shameless about this morning, this this morning. I believe you ought to shamelessly stand up and say, I'm done with this. And I don't know how I can do it, but the only thing I know is that, that Jesus just told us that we ought to pray that God will keep, will, will keep us safe from temptation. And I'm going to pray until he does it. I'm going to cling to him till he does it. There's some of you here that are, that are thinking, man, I've, I, I have my life in head of, ahead of me, but I don't have a clue what I'm supposed to be doing with it. You know what? I believe you ought to grab the, gar the, the hem of God's garment this morning and cling to it and go, Lord, until, until you give me a clue what my purpose is here on this earth, I'm not letting go. I'm not letting go. You know, I think there's some older folks in here that right today, I ought to say, you know, I, I once burned with fire for my Lord. And I'd like to think that, the, that my relationship with him would get sweeter as the days go by, but it hasn't. And I've just grown cranky. I've just grown distant. And I don't trust him like I used to trust him because maybe I've got too much wisdom. Maybe I, I'm trusting in myself too much. But, but you, you, you need to trust God today and you need to cling to him. And you need to come with some shameless audacity and quit acting like you're, you're, uh, you're wise and strong and all of those things. And come and shamelessly admit I am not any of those things and I need God's intervention now. Would you do that? The worship team, would you come? Uh, we're we're going to prepare for the end of our service. But as they're coming, if you want to come and pray, I'm, I'm going to pray. We're just going to spend some time in prayer with the, with the Holy Spirit, seeking his face, seeking what he has for us. Heavenly Father, come in the sweetness of this moment. Help us be like a seven-year-old little girl that isn't afraid to ask her papa something. Help us to be shameless this morning. Shamelessly, we need forgiveness. Shamelessly, we need direction. Shamelessly, we need healing. Shamelessly, we, we, we need doors opened. Lord, shamelessly, we need people in our life transformed by your grace and Lord they don't even seem to look your direction they seem hard to you and Lord we need them to soften up Lord would you answer our prayer Lord you love us and you don't even mind being bothered by us and so Lord we're gonna 
shake the gates and shake the fences and we're going to stir some trouble up because we believe that you have an answer for us today. We believe that you have an answer for our children. We believe that you have an answer for our grandkids. We believe that you have an answer for our purpose for the rest of our lives. We believe, Lord, that you have an answer for our cold, hard hearts against you. We, Lord, we believe that you have an answer for all of these things. Lord, I pray for the friend that, that uh, loves politics more than you. They love the fight of politics more than they, they love to, to grab a hold of you. Lord, I just pray that you would change their heart and that, that you would make them their minds stayed on you. That they would find their peace in you. That they would find their significance in you. Lord, today, I, I just pray these things. I pray that we will never be done with you because you are never done with us. And Lord... During this moment, there are way more important things going on in our heart of hearts than, than sometimes we let on. And we want to be seen as the person who has it together. We want to be seen as the person who is strong in their faith. But Lord, sometimes we just need to forget all of that and shamelessly come before you as, as we are. It's, it's the pers person who is slobbering in their tears shamelessly before you seeking your grace and your mercy and seeking your answers because lord ours haven't worked our prayer today is that you would bless us and like jacob we are not afraid to grovel before you to cling to you and to cry out lord if you don't bless us no one else will and so we need your blessing I pray this today in the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Would you stand and worship with us as we